Hello, everyone. My name is Dylan Pines with Musician on a Mission, and today we are going to be talking about gain staging. This mixing technique is one of the most controversial in the whole digital mixing world. It's something that my students have asked me about for years, and it's something that is one of the most misunderstood concepts that I find with my students week after week. So I wanted to make an FAQ video that covers all the different questions that I get about gain staging. Hopefully by the end of this video, you won't have any confusion over how exactly to do this extremely helpful technique so that you can move on with your life and make some much better mixes. But before we get into it, I wanna let you know we are giving away a free bonus for today's video. We're giving away our entire treasure trove of mixing cheat sheets. We've been designing these over the past few years and there is some fantastic info in here. Stuff on EQ and compression and reverb, delay, saturation, volume balancing, anything in between. We've probably got it in this pack and we're giving it away free. So if you'd like your own personal access, just click the link on screen or down in the description below and we'll make sure to get one sent straight to you. So let's start with the basics. Here's our first question. What is gain staging and why does it matter? Now gain staging, it does have a few definitions, but for this video, we're gonna be focusing on the pre-mix process of changing the gain of all of your recordings so that they sit around the same level. Now, really what this does, it makes mixing faster, it makes mixing easier, and it makes plugins sound their best by putting your tracks in the fabled sweet spot. Now we're gonna cover what this means and how to do it throughout this video, so sit tight. So now let's move on to question number two. Is gain staging just volume balancing? Easy answer, no, it's not. Gain staging does not equal volume balancing. And this is actually a common misconception among not only beginner producers and mixers, but even into intermediate and advanced ones. Gain and volume are not the same thing. So both of them describe amplitude, right? They describe the level of a track. Now, the volume of a track is how loud that track is, the level of that track, after it's been processed. But the gain is how loud a track is before it's been processed. So basically gain is your input level, but volume is your output level. So changing your volume faders does not change the gain of your regions. Your channel's plugins aren't affected. This is why we care about gain staging in the first place. If I go to my vocals, for example, and I put on a compressor, if I solo this instrument, these vocals and I hit play and I start to turn down my volume fader right here, you're gonna be able to see that I'm gonna still get the same amount of gain reduction that I got before. Nothing is really gonna change. We're rolling down the road, you and me. You see how I continue to get that compression? That's because volume is my output level. It is at the end of my signal flow. Now, if I was to put this back where it was and I started to change the gain, on the other hand, then you're gonna see less and less compression. So I'm gonna go in here before a compressor, and this is just one of the ways that you can change up your gain. I'm gonna grab a gain plugin, and I'm gonna start to turn this down. And you're gonna see that your compression is going to slowly decrease as I turn the gain down. Whereas with our volume fader, that didn't happen at all. We're rolling down the road, you and me. So the main takeaway from this section needs to be this. Changing your volume doesn't mean changing your gain. If you turn your volume down, your gain remains the same. So that leads naturally into our next question. How do you change a region's gain? Well, there's generally two different ways. You can see that I've actually already done one of them. So one of them is to add a gain plugin or a trim plugin at the very top of a channel. So the very first plugin on an entire channel. And as you turn up or down the gain, that's going to change how much level is flowing into your plugins, which is gonna help you to get to that sweet spot that we're gonna talk about later in the video. If I was to take this plugin, this gain plugin, and turn it down by five dBs, 
then my entire gain for this particular track is gonna be turned down by five decibels. Now, that is one way to do it. The other way is by using your DAW's gain system. It's different for every DAW, so you might have to do a little bit of research on your own. In Logic Pro, it's up here in the little region area. So you can see right here, there's something that says gain. And take a look at my waveform. I'm gonna increase the size of this. And you can see, as I decrease my gain, my waveform decreases as well. As I increase it, my waveform increases. That shows you that it's changing the level of the audio file itself, not just the level of the overall channel. So I'd recommend doing gain staging with whichever method works best for you. For me, I like using my DAW's gain system just because I like to be able to see what it does to the waveform itself. So now that you know how to change a region's gain, there's the next obvious question. What should you change the gain to? What is this sweet spot that you've been hearing about throughout this video. So the sweet spot that allows your plugins to work with their highest sound quality potential is zero dB VU or negative 18 dB FS, but I'm not really a big fan of that method. Now, I know that seems really specific. Like why is that the number that we're trying to gain stage to? And what even is a VU meter? Well, basically, the plugin sweet spot exists because most plugins are modeled after old analog technology from pro studios in the 20th century. You know, before the computer, these analog preamps and compressors and EQs and so on, they all used a different way of measuring volume than we do now. They used the VU meter. So if I go over here, you actually can get VU meters in plugin form. So here's an example of one right here. This is actually a free plugin from uh, TB Pro Audio. It's the MV Meter 2. So you can get this at least at the time of recording this for free. And this probably looks very familiar to you. If you've seen any old analog gear, you've probably seen VU meters on here. Now, most of the old analog tech was calibrated so that it sounded its best whenever audio was flowing through it at around zero dB VU. So if it was sitting there on average, you were gonna get the best possible sound quality. Since so many of our plugins are modeled after that tech, they share that same sound quality sweet spot. But we need to use a VU meter to find it. So that's gonna be our next FAQ question. How do I use a VU meter to gain stage? So here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna put a VU meter plugin onto your mix bus or your stereo output or whatever the final channel is in your DAW. So I'm gonna go over to my stereo output right here. I'm gonna click and I'm gonna select MV meter two. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure that all of my tracks are set to zero. They're set to unity. I don't want anything turning up or down the volume of my regions. The other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure that all of my tracks are panned to the center. I don't want anything panned to the sides if I can avoid it. So now what you're going to do is you're gonna solo one track at a time, and you're gonna loop the loudest part of the song for that specific instrument. So for example, let's look at this bass. I'm gonna solo this out, and the loudest part of the song for this bass looks like it's probably around where I actually have this looping right now. So I'm gonna hit play, and I'm gonna change the gain on this track until it sits on average around zero dB VU. And that's really important to say, on average, going above zero dB VU is expected. That's totally okay. You're not trying to get it to peak at that level, you're trying to get it to sit there on average. So I'm gonna hit play, and I'm gonna start changing my gain until it looks right to me. That's pretty darn close for me. And, and remember, this is not a hard and fast science. You're really kind of just trying to get it into the ballpark of that area. It doesn't have to be exactly sitting at, on average, zero dB VU. So for me, I was finding that uh, having my gain boosted up a little bit by about 1.5 dBs was really all I needed. Now let's check out, for example, this piano track.
Okay, so, you know, this one's peaking at around negative 5, so I'm going to try turning it up by about 5 dBs. And you can see that my waveform is increasing with it. So for something like this, you know, it's such a dynamic instrument, I'm not really going to be able to get it to sit fully on average around one particular spot because it's changing so dramatically. So when this happens, I do actually try to get it just to sort of peak somewhere around 0 dB VU. That's totally fine. Again, this is a soft science, not a hard one. Now, you just need to use this method for the tracks in your mix, and you should have your plugins working at their highest potential. But there's an obvious follow-up question to this. Why can't I just use my DAWs volume meter? That's actually because it's a whole different way of measuring volume. Your DAWs volume meter is most likely a full scale meter, also known as a peak meter or an FS meter. So it actually reads volume a lot faster than a VU meter, which makes it pretty difficult to gauge where a track is sitting on average, at least when you're comparing it to our VU meter. So you can see, for example, I'm peaking at around zero dB, right? But check out where I'm peaking on my actual volume channel for this piano. Peaking at about negative 4.5, you know, roughly around there. Now, here's why, for me, this situation keeps me from wanting to use my DAWs volume meter. So in a vacuum, 0 dB VU equals around negative 18 dB FS, or dB full scale. You know, you heard me say that earlier on in this video, and you've probably heard other audio teachers on the internet say that as well. You know, they say, oh, you know, you're trying to hit that digital sweet spot, which is negative 18 dBFS. But if I was to get this, you know, if I was to get this track, gain stage this track so that it was sitting, you know, it was peaking around negative 18 dBFS, well, it's going to be peaking so quietly on my VU meter. In my VU meter is the one that matters because that's the one that our sweet spot is actually based on. Let me show you what I'm talking about. I'm going to try to get this to sit on average at about negative 18. So somewhere around there is probably good. We're doing what we think we should on our full scale meter but we're only hitting about negative 10 dB VU over here on our actual VU meter. So what that means is we're not actually hitting our digital sweet spot. We're getting it on our FS meter, but our full scale meter just doesn't matter as much as getting it on our VU meter. So for me, that's why I stick to using a VU meter and leave it at that. Now this brings up actually another question that I get asked all the time. And this is actually the main reason why I wanted to make this video, because this is a very common misconception. If I'm gain staging my mix with a VU meter, what should I do if a track starts to clip? And I just want you to know, this happens. This is unfortunately not a perfect system. The more extreme the dynamics of a particular recording is, the higher your peak value or your FS value is going to be, and the lower your VU value is going to be. Now that probably seems a little confusing, so let me just show you what I'm talking about. I'm gonna go over here to my snare, and I'm gonna solo this snare out. And I want you to look at both my VU meter and my dBFS meter, my peak meter. You're going to see a dramatic difference between the two, and your drums are a great example of where this system needs a little bit of tweaking. Okay, so, I'm peaking at about negative 3 dBFS, but over here I'm only getting to about negative 8 dBVU. So let's say I was going to turn up my gain so that I'm getting around that uh, 0 dBVU sweet spot. Let's see what happens. I 
am distorting like crazy, right? I'm getting about almost 5 dBs of clipping. And that just barely got me up to 0 dB VU. So this is a situation where I am not going to be able to get this instrument into the digital sweet spot. And that's okay. Most drums don't get to sit in the digital sweet spot. That's because digital clipping wasn't a thing in the analog world. So they didn't have to worry about it, but you do. So what I'd recommend instead is to just get them as close as you can to zero dBVU, but leave yourself some headroom. In fact, I actually will often normalize my drum gain. Now that might sound a little freaky for anyone who doesn't really understand what normalizing is, but basically the normalization process just sets the gain of each track so that it's peaking at a certain level. So for me, I kind of arbitrarily picked negative six dBs. I don't want my drum gain to ever go above that amount. That's gonna give me enough headroom to feel confident in turning my drums up or down in the mix and knowing that they're not going to clip. Now, every single DAW has a different system for normalization, so you might need to do a little bit of Googling on your own. But what I do for Logic Pro is I'll just grab all of my drums. I'm gonna go up to Functions. I'm gonna go down to Normalize Region Gain. I'm going to select Individual Tracks or Individual Regions, either one works. I'm gonna still keep my algorithm as Peak. And then I'm gonna select my target level to be negative six dBs. I'm gonna make sure that I hit enter because that's going to actually lock it into place. And then I'm gonna hit apply. And you can see right here, my gain turned down quite a bit. It's no longer in that huge peak zone. It's actually been turned down by about negative 4.2 dBs. Now what that means is that's the closest I'm really gonna be able to get this particular track to zero dB VU and still have it be peaking at only negative six dB FS. Now, I know I'm throwing a lot of crazy vernacular at you. Really, you can forget all these vocab words if you want. They're hardly ever used unless we're talking about gain staging. But the main thing to know is that your drums, I would normalize them, pick whatever number you want. I usually go with negative six dBs because I just feel like that's a pretty decent amount of headroom. Just don't try to actually use a VU meter on hyper dynamic instruments because you're probably gonna cause clipping. So here's an important question. When should I gain stage my tracks? Gain staging is 99% of the time a pre-mix technique. You're gonna to want to do this before you ever start mixing. That's because you don't want any of your channels to be turned to anything other than unity. You know, you want them to be set at zero dBs. That's because you're going to want to get an accurate version of what your gain looks like. Also, you don't want to have any plugins on your channels because if you change the gain of a plugin, you're going to change how that plugin is acting. It's the entire point of gain staging in the first place. So if you do it before you start mixing, you're going to be setting yourself up with a fantastic foundation to build upon. But if you do it halfway through your mix, you're just going to absolutely wreck your mix. It's gonna cause total chaos. All of a sudden tracks where you're maybe getting two or three dBs of compression, you're suddenly getting 10 dBs of compression. Or tracks where you've got a decent amount of saturation on them, you're suddenly getting no saturation because the gain is too quiet. So you definitely wanna make sure that you're doing this first. If you're in the middle of a mix right now, don't worry about doing it on this mix. Just start doing it on the next mix. So here's another common question. Do I have to gain stage all of my tracks? And the answer to this is no, you don't. Here's my rule of thumb. The more plugins a track will use, the better it will sound if you gain stage the recording. So if you're gonna be doing a lot of processing on a particular track, then I would absolutely gain stage it. But if it's something that's really quiet and it's meant to be in the background and you know you're not really gonna do much of anything on it, then don't worry about it. It's okay, you can totally skip that one. Like for example, I often won't gain stage my tambourines because I know they're gonna be just a very quiet background instrument. If I know that I'm gonna do a lot of compression and EQ and saturation on them, then I definitely am gonna gain stage them because I want them to sound the best they can. So on to our next question. Do I have to gain stage my MIDI tracks? 
This is something that I hear tons from people who are doing either home studios, you know, where they're doing virtual instruments that they just don't have access to recording, or electronic producers or pop producers who are using stuff like synths or samples. So again, I've got to go back to my rule of thumb. The more plugins a track is going to use, the better it will sound if you gain stage it. So if it's a really, really background synthesizer, I wouldn't stress too hard over it. But if it's a big synth lead, or maybe it is a virtual drum set, uh, or maybe it's a whole bunch of samples that you're gonna be compressing, then I would definitely take the time to gain stage. Now, if you're using MIDI, you can't really gain stage that using your DAW's gain staging system. It doesn't really have gain, it's just information, it's not a recording. So instead, you would want to either go into your software, into your virtual instrument, and change the volume there, or you would just want to add a gain plugin to the very top of your actual plugin chain, the very top of your channel. So let me show you an example of what I'm talking about. Okay, so I have a quick synth patch that I made. Let me actually pull it up, and uh, let's just take a look on our VU beater and see how loud it is. So it's sitting on average at about negative six dBVU. So instead of actually going in here and changing the gain on my MIDI file, which I can't do, I'm just gonna go to the volume, which is, remember, just the output level of my synth. And I'm just gonna turn it up until it's sitting at around zero dB. Perfect. Nice and simple. So you can either do that, or you can just use the gain method and put a gain plugin at the very top of that particular channel and turn it up or down that way. So another common question that I get, how long should gain staging take? Preferably not long at all. The first time you do it, you know, it might take you some time because you're getting used to it, but the next time you do it, it will take you less time and the next time even less time. At a certain point, you want to get to a level where you're able to knock it out in probably 10 minutes. Unless you have just a ton of tracks, if you start taking more than that, then you're just using valuable mixing time. And honestly, it's not really worth taking hours and hours just to make sure you're getting a little bit more quality out of your plugins. And our final question is this, what about gain automation? I've heard that's the secret sauce of gain staging. You know, honestly, it is, it's fantastic, especially for compression, but it's pretty complicated. So it's something that I'm gonna be covering in more detail in another video. So be on the lookout for that. But if I was to describe it in just a few seconds, gain automation is basically the process where you are going through a particularly dynamic instrument, like for example, your vocals, and instead of changing the gain for the whole instrument, you are actually splitting different regions up like this and changing the gain for individual regions. That way, the gain for each phrase in a particular song is around the same level. This is great because it allows your compression to be sitting at the same intensity the entire song. Instead of having maybe one phrase have a ton of compression and another phrase have very little at all. It's also very helpful for instruments where one section of the song, they might be very quiet, and another section of the song, it's very, very loud. You're gonna have very inconsistent compression that way. So like I said, we're gonna be covering that in another video coming up, so keep your eye out for that. So that's going to about wrap it up. These are the most frequent questions that I'm asked about gain staging, but these aren't all the questions that I've been asked. If you have any other gain staging questions, leave them in the comments below they might make their way into a future video. And before you head out, don't forget we are giving away a huge free bonus on this video, our entire collection of designed mixing cheat sheets. Make sure to click the link on screen or down in the description to get your own free access. This is stuff that honestly, I will even use each time I mix. In fact, Keep your eye out for the EQ balance chart, the thing that goes over the frequency spectrum. It is maybe my favorite thing that Musician on a Mission has ever created. It's something that I use every single time I mix. Also, if you're new here, don't forget to like and subscribe. We make tutorials just like this one every single week on this channel, and we would honestly love to help you grow in any way we can. So 
that's going to about wrap it up for me. This has been Dylan Pines with Musician on a Mission. And remember, create regardless. <laughs>